Hey everybody, today we are looking at section 4 or 5, which we're still talking about triangle congruence, but what we're going to look at today is looking at some shortcuts to show that triangles are congruent. So in the last lesson, we talked about how in order to show triangles were congruent, we had to prove that every pair of corresponding sides was congruent and every pair of corresponding angles was congruent. Today, we're going to get some shortcuts with that. And the first of those shortcuts is what we call side, side, side. So instead of saying that every pair of sides and every pair of angles are congruent, here we can just prove that every pair of sides are congruent. We don't have to know anything about any of the angles. And if we can show that all three pairs of sides are congruent, that is enough to show that my triangles are congruent. All right, so if you have questions about that, write it down, but we're going to take a look at this in just a second. All right, so here we go. Again, so I'm going to reiterate from our notes from yesterday. Whenever you are given information or you are able to prove information is true, be sure that you mark it on your picture because it will help you determine which shortcut you are actually using. So let's start here. We're given that RS is congruent to UT. So here's RS and here's UT and they are marked as congruent. We are also told that RT is congruent to SU and they are also marked as congruent with my double congruence. We wanna prove that my triangles are congruent. So what I'm looking at here is I don't know anything about any of these angles, but the question is, is what is the third side of this triangle here? and it's this one with ST, okay? And, and the third side in this triangle is also ST. So doesn't it make sense that ST is congruent to itself, okay? Because it doesn't change from one triangle to the other. So remember that, um, so I can write here that ST is congruent to ST, and I can't write, da -da -da -da, ST. ST congruent to ST. So remember back in chapter two, when we were talking about your reflexive, your symmetric, and your transitive properties, and I said that your reflexive seemed really silly because it was like, oh, A equals A. Well, no kidding. Here, in this example, and in this chapter, and in these proofs, this is where it's going to be a huge part of those proofs, okay? Because you have to say in your proof that we have one, two, three pairs of sides are congruent. Without showing that those three pairs of sides are congruent, we can't prove that my triangles are congruent. So anytime you see two triangles sharing a side, I want you to mark it, write that they are congruent by your reflexive property. Okay? So this is where it's super, super important. So now I have one pair, two pair, three pair of sides congruent. I can say that my triangles are congruent by side, 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 because I know that I have three pairs of congruent signs, so the triangles have to be congruent. That is the theorem that we just said. All right, so if you have questions about that, please write them down now. All right, so let's take a look at this next one. Okay, we are looking at what is called an included angle. So the included angle is the angle between where two sides meet. Okay, so like if I look at side AB and side CB, the angle where they meet is angle B. So angle B is the included side between, or included angle between sides AB and CB. Okay, which will lead us into our next. Um, shortcut, our next theorem or postulate in this case. Okay, we have side, angle, side. And guys, it's gonna go in this order, all right? It has to be side, then the included angle, then another side. So when I look at this, okay, notice that I have my blue sides are congruent, my green sides are congruent, and the angle where those two sides meet those are congruent, okay? So it's a side and then an angle and then another side. So this gives me side, angle, side. 
that is enough to show that my two triangles are congruent if I know that those two sides, those two pairs of sides are congruent as well as the angle in between them. All right, so again, let's take a look and at this example. All right, so we're given that BC and AD are parallel. Notice that is marked on my picture. We are given that BC and AD are also congruent. Okay, so remember, oh, and if you would for me, please, in your notes, actually, it's there on your notes. I'm just going to add it here because for some reason that didn't get transferred. So never mind. It's in your notes. You're good to go. All right. So the first thing that I just told you is when we look at these two triangles, because I'm trying to prove that ABD, which is this triangle here, and um, CBD are congruent. Do they share anything? They share a side. Okay, so the first thing that I want you to do when you see that is write that BD is congruent to BD by reflexive. Okay, so anytime your triangles share a side, I want to see that step right away. Now, let's use the fact that my lines are parallel. So if I take a look at this line here parallel to this line here. All right, I'm trying to prove my triangles are congruent. All right, the way that I'm going to do that is I'm either going to prove all three pairs of sides are congruent, which if I look, I can't know anything about A, B, and C, D. There's no way that I can prove that those sides are congruent. So my other goal then would be to prove that the angle in between those sides, the included angle, those angles are congruent. So if I look at that, that's this angle here and this angle here, okay? Because here's my two congruent sides, here's where they meet. Here's my two other two congruent sides, here's where they meet. Those are my included angles. That means I'm looking at this as a transversal. So we're bringing back some chapter three. How can I know that these angles are congruent? What kinds of angles are these? Okay, they are alternate interior angle. Now we are given that the lines are parallel, so this is the theorem. So I can say that angle CBD is congruent to angle AD, oh, yeah, ADB because they're alternate interior angles. Okay, my lines are parallel, so my alternate interior angles are congruent. So now that I have that this angle is congruent to this angle, I have a congruent side, a congruent angle, and a congruent side. I have side angle side. Okay, one thing that I want to be very, very, very clear on here is watch out for two triangles that look like this, okay? This is a side, a side, and an angle. The theorem SSA, or if we read it in reverse, does not exist. We don't want any curse words in geometry, whether it's forwards or backwards, okay? If we look at the abbreviation backwards here, this is not acceptable, okay? We don't curse at all. So please make sure that this is not enough information, okay? It has to have the angle between the two sides, not outside of them. So if you have questions on that, go ahead and write that down now. All right, so let's take a look here. We wanna know if I wanna prove that triangle ABC is congruent to ADC by side angle side, what else do I need to know? So we need to know what other information do we need, okay? So let's see what we can conclude. I know that both of these are right angles. So I know that both of these angles are congruent. I don't need to be told that. Do my triangles share a side? Yes, they share this side right here. 
okay? So now I need to know what would be missing. I can't conclude anything else from the picture. So I have a side, I have an angle, I need the other side, okay? So this angle is between AC and BC. I need to be told that BC is congruent to DC in order to have side angle side, okay? Because we already know, all right, because we can show, let's say we can already show. that AC is congruent to itself by reflexive and that angle ACB is congruent to angle ACD because all right angles are congruent. Okay, so that's the only piece of information here, this BC congruent to DC, that we need in order to show we have side angle side. Everything else we can figure out based on the picture. All right, questions on that? Go ahead and write it down now. So let's take a look at our last example here. We want to know, can we use side, 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 side angle side, or none of the above? Okay, if we don't have enough information, that's what we're going to write in order to show that my triangles that were given here are congruent. So when I look at these two, okay, these two pairs of sides are congruent, these two pairs of angles are congruent, and these two pairs of sides. I have a side, I have an angle, and I have a side here. So this is going to be side angle side, okay? I do not know this side congruent to this side, so I can't use side, side, side. I don't know all three pairs of sides. Notice that the angle that is given here is between both of the sides. All right, if we look at B, I have an angle up here and a side down here congruent to this angle and this side. Everything that I've done so far has needed at least three pieces of information three congruent sides or two congruent sides in their included angle. This is only two pieces of information, so this is not enough. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at C. I know this side is congruent to this side. I know that these two sides are congruent, and I know that these two sides are congruent. So I have a side, a side, and a side. So they are going to be congruent by side, side, side. I do not know anything about any of the angle measures in this or in these two triangles. So please make sure that you're not using side, angle, side because we don't have any angle measures that are given. Okay? Then let's take a look at D. I know that this angle is congruent to this one. And I know that these two sides are congruent. And I know that these two sides are congruent. So I have a side, a side, and an angle. Now, is the angle between my two sides? Okay, that answer is no. So it is also not enough information. Okay, this is the not nice one if you spell it backwards. Okay, notice these are the same forward and backwards, okay? This is not nice if we write it the other way. That's how you know that's not a thing. It's not a possible way to show that those triangles are concurrent. Okay, so if you have any questions on that, go ahead and write it down now, and then we will talk about it in class. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day, and I will see you later.